Hello again, guys. So today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. Um, normally I do the normal haul videos, what sold videos, all of that stuff. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how I organize all of my purchases. Um, so yeah, I'm basically going to break down a little bit about what happens after I bring the stuff inside. So generally speaking, I'll go to Goodwill or Value Village and I'll stock up on all of my favorite goodies and then I will come back home and throw it into my floor very gracefully. <laughs> um, so you can see I've got a whole pile of things right here and right here and in the floor that need to be listed. So we're going to have a little bit of a list with me section and I'm a uh, session and I'm going to show you kind of exactly how I do this. So let me move me really quick. Uh, let's see. I think I can move me. There we go. That's much better. I need to get me off of this area. So this is my Airtable spreadsheet. Um, again, there is a link below. You guys can click on that link and grab your free account. And if you go to uh, my Etsy store, which is also linked below, you'll, you'll be able to purchase access to this exact spreadsheet plus a walkthrough on exactly how I have it set up and how I use it. And even better, this button up here in the corner will mean that you there's a, it actually turns into a copy button for you. And uh, sorry, my dog is laying on stuff. But that actually turns into a copy button for you. And that means that you can copy everything in this base over into your base. Uh, and that also means that that makes setting up your own base so much easier. Um, and I should tell you that it does not copy all of the information. It doesn't copy the images and the prices and the names and all the things that I've purchased. But it copies over all of the different cells. So that makes it really easy for you to just jump in and start keeping track of your own uh, stuff basically. So, all right, let's go on ahead and have a little bit of a list with me. And this won't take too long because some of this stuff I have already listed. So that's not going to be a big deal. So when I'm ready to sit down and list, I make sure I pull all of my stuff out. Um, and I'm a very organized person. I don't like a bunch of things around my office. So right now it's a little bit crazy because that pile right there is from my wedding and that stuff is all being sold in a batch. I literally, I don't want to hang on to it forever and it's just plates and things like that. So um, we're actually going to sell it for 300 bucks. You take the whole thing. You can't leave anything behind. That's kind of how that's working. And then I have another little pile right there, which I am selling for individual resale. That's a lot of stuff like the salsa, the aluminum salsa cups and baskets and really decorative items that I know I can actually get a little bit more money for. So that little bitty pile is a resale pile. The big pile is a nasty monster pile. But otherwise, my office tends to stay pretty darn clean. And the reason it stays pretty darn clean is because of this listing process that I have. So let's go on ahead and dive in. One of the first things that you're going to need, other than your Etsy spreadsheet all set up and ready to go, is going to be a uh, receipt. So this was the Goodwill receipt for what I had from earlier today. The only reason I would need this is to uh, log any kind of a discount. Because a lot of times, like if they've got, like at Goodwill, they're going to have the discounts on all red tags. They're going to say 50% off on all red tags. So in order for me to double check and make sure I have all of what I paid listed correctly plus the tax, that's where this receipt comes in handy. So that is essentially what I need the receipt for. Um, after I'm done with the receipt, I generally throw it away. I do not hang on to all of my receipts because I have, re have everything in here logged so perfectly. Um, okay, but it's completely up to you however you want to do that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm going to set that aside. Like I said, the only time I need that is if I know I have anything that is on sale. I did not get anything on sale today, so probably not going to need this, but it's good to hang around just in case. The first thing that I got, and this was kind of a, maybe a pay to learn. I'm not totally sure. I did find this, I, I think I found one similar to this online for about $20 PS. Leave the tags on there. This is, I do not take any tags off until everything is logged. And this logging process takes probably 15 minutes max. So it's the first thing that I do. I literally walk in, log everything, and then I can go about my day doing whatever I want to do. Okay, so... This is a vintage head AMF racket. Now, it's funny because I've actually sold vintage AMF stuff before. It was bowling related, um, but that did really, really well. It was a leather bowling bag that I got for like $4 and sold for like $55. But what I love about it is it is it's just a really small, it's a very small racket. I'm not, I used to play tennis when I was a kid, and this is a very 
small racket. I wonder if it's racquetball or if the rackets were smaller in like the 70s. Um, just based on the cover and the way the cover is designed, it looks very 70s to me. Uh, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on it. That is not what the logging process is for. So basically what I do is I will come over here and I describe it quickly, but as best as I can. So I say AMF head racket. And then I give it the next number in the sequence. So one, three, seven, zero. Um, and then you can see it has date listed, haven't listed it yet, so that stays blank. The description, haven't done that yet, so that stays blank. We'll talk about this in a different video, how I list things. Uh, this is gonna be more of a uh, how I document things. <laughs> How I organize things. Um, pictures, so when I'm, after I've done the photography, which I do on my iPhone, we'll do another video on that as well. I put those in there. Um, and then the purchase cost. So here is definitely something that I have to log. So I paid $5 for this, technically $4.99, but we'll say $5, whoops, $5 on that. Listing cost, so that's gonna be the 20 cents or the 30 cents that you pay with either eBay or uh, Etsy or whatever platform you're using. Sell price, so you can see my columns in the sell price are actually orange and it matches this kind of peachy orange up here that says sorted by three fields. If I put in a price tag, if I put in a sell price on that, this column right here is going to move because I have this sorted by sales price. And I'll show, you what, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we're gonna leave that blank for now. Whenever I do research on items, I fill that in. Um, so I have things organized when I'm ready to list. I have things, let's see, let's go to the top of this column. Uh, let's scroll up a little bit. We'll get there. See, you can see, I, you can see I've got price tags on a lot of this stuff. Now, I haven't listed this stuff. This is part of my listing process. I haven't listed any of this stuff yet, but, uh, so all of this stuff is, is stock that I still need to, to list. So there's my September uh, and to be listed. So you can see up here, I have everything sorted by how much I'm going to list it for. And I can always change this later. But for example, my parents gave me some equipment for their RV that is brand new out of the box, retails for $300. I still need to list that. But it's at the top of the list because I have put in a sell price of $300 on that. My ultimate wedding kit, that thing in that back corner that I showed you, I'm actually going to do that one for $300 because I added some stuff to it last night. So we'll update that. And you can see it updates the sell price column up here. So out of everything that has a price tag right now, I have six thousand six hundred and eighty-two dollars worth of worth of um, product that hasn't been listed yet, which is why Josh is helping me out, and I'm trying to list as much as I possibly can. I need to kind of slow it down on the buying, but <laughs> I've got some cool stuff. Um, okay, so you can see in this column right here, I've got the title, uh, I've got the number, I've got the images. I've got how much I paid for it, how much I'm selling it for, and then we have fees and taxes. That's gonna come after we sell the item. Uh, and then my profit, that's going to come, and we'll go through, uh, next time I do, next time I have an item that sells, I'll do a how to log something that sells video. But so my sell price is $55. Essentially what that's gonna be though is, um, this is gonna change because my sell price always reflects the price that I sold it for plus shipping and handling. So when the buyer pays, I come back in here and I'll change this to $67.47 because that's what my total, that's the total that they paid with shipping and handling. Uh, and then I can subtract the listing and the purchase and the fees and taxes, and that's what happens with my profit. I also log in the sales date. When I am ready to, when I'm ready to list this item after I've listed it, I come over here, one of the first things that I do, and I will, again, have a list, a list with me video. I come over here and I select the, here, let's go ahead and do this. So keep an eye right there on that row. So if I come down here and I say that we listed this, so it still says to be listed. If I say that we, that blank area means that it's been listed, you can see record moved. That's actually moved up to the listed area. So it's no longer in the to be listed area. Um, and you can see I've also got all of the months of, and it, there it is, it appeared right again. So um, all of the months for to keep track of things that have sold, to be fixed, which technically the Melody in Motion Clock should be to be fixed. Lot items, so if I have jewelry jar lot items, I can do that. Scraps, if I buy something, like yesterday, I bought this really cool little jewelry box. It was like a, you know, the, you know the, it's metal. I think it might have been pewter covered in gold, I think is what it was. Anyways, I dropped it and a leg busted off and I just had to, 
I just had to scrap it. But the reason I keep track of the scrapped items is because that is money that I'm still putting into the business and I want to see uh, if I'm spending money in the business, I, I still want to keep track of that. Finders keepers are things that I have kept but might want to sell later on down the road. So I do want to keep track of how much I paid for it, when I bought it, you know, that kind of a thing. So those are all of my sections on here. Okay, let's go right back down here to our tennis racket. All right, so we've got the AMF head racket title in there, and I don't have anything else. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put tennis racket. The reason you want to make sure you're thorough on this is because when you come back in later on and you're going to list it, uh, it makes it really difficult to find if you've named it if you've named it something vague. For example, I have something something that I have kept called Mr. Dan. And I don't know what it is. I've had it for like six months. I obviously, I, put, I have it in the finder's keeper section. So I kept it because I love it. But I cannot figure out what it is. I don't know what it is because I wasn't thorough. I wrote Mr. Dan on it. And obviously that was signed Mr. Dan. It was probably ceramics that I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I don't know who Mr. Dan is. Anyways, that's one of the conundrums right now in my life. All right, so bought it for $5. Sell price, I'm not putting that in, but I think it's going to be $20 and up. I need to do a little bit more research on this particular one. There's a model. Yeah, there's a model number on the base, so I've got to do a little bit more research because some of these do go for like $150. I'm betting this one's a $20 racket, but we'll find out. I paid $5 for it. Fees, taxes, profit, don't have to pay attention to that. Uh, keep it to be listed. Notes. As I'm doing my research, if I find a, an identical listing for this racket and it's got really good information in it, like the year it was made or maybe a famous tennis player who used this rack, who used this type of racket, something like that, something that I want to make sure that I maybe can include in my own listing as well, I will put links or notes right there to um, jog my memory a little bit when I'm ready to list it. Right here you have Etsy, eBay, Facebook, and Mercari links. So every time I list something, I put the link in those fields. That way, um, when the item ends in one, like if it sells on Facebook, I can easily go back in and discontinue the item on the other three platforms. It makes things really easy and makes cross posting easy and makes me, it also means that I'm not going to accidentally sell something to three different people. You know, I'm very, very meticulous about it. I also have whether they've paid or whether it's pending. For example, today I'm selling a restroom sign at, I had to double check time, a restroom sign at 345. Um, and I wanted to, and, and, and I, right now it's at the pending stage because he hasn't paid me yet. So I have it as pending so that it's obvious when I have it in the September solds category that this has not been paid for yet. The second he pays me, I go in, change that to pending and add the different locations that I, that I sold it to. So if I, when I sell this, if I were to sell it through Facebook marketplace, I would just log it as Facebook Marketplace. And all that does is it allows me to go back in and look at September and see maybe what uh, venue did the best for me because they're all color coded. It's really easy for me to look at that and go, oh, I did really, really well on Etsy last month. That kind of a thing. Uh, the location. This is important. So let's go on. Let me go on ahead and show you guys a little bit about how I keep everything. The lighting isn't going to be great over here, but I'm going to show you anyways. Okay, uh, let's see if you guys can see this. Let's see, let's find a pretty sticker. So if you guys can see that, that is um, a sticker. Specifically, that is a Lisa Frank sticker. And this is one of those hutches that you can get at, um, that you can get at Ikea. It's got the, what, 16 different cubbies. So the way I have it organized, and again, wedding stuff is in the way. But the way I have this organized is down here is where I keep jewelry. You can see that red basket. That's where I keep all of my listed jewelry. Not unlisted jewelry, just listed jewelry. These are cubbies. Uh, let's see if you can see that. These are cubbies where I keep all of my textiles. Those are cubbies where I keep all of my ephemera. So uh, newspapers and uh, Valentine's cards, things like that. Things like that I'm going to that I'm gonna resell that's paper. And then up here in these two rows are bins where I'm going to keep resellable stuff. So I can show you kind of what that looks like. Whoa, you got to be careful with it because a lot of it's glass. Um, but see, that's where that is. Now I have a very similar system in the closet as well. Again, wedding stuff in the way. Oh God, I can't wait to get rid of all of this stuff. Ah, it's going to fall. There we go. Okay. It sort of fell anyways. Okay. Um, so you can see that I have got 
bins right here as well. And you can't tell, but there's a cactus and a pineapple, and there are two more different bins. Oh, that's the restroom sign I've got to sell. <laughs> um, but seriously, how cool is that restroom sign? Ah! Okay. I'm going to stop goofing off. Sorry. I get a little ADD and sidetracked. So that's how that system works. So essentially what's going to happen... Hold on one second. Let's get comfortable again. P.S. That's the restroom sign. It's from the 1960s from a company called George Nathan. I love it. So that's going to a new home at 345. Um, okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is when I list it, and I only do this... Well, no, you can do you can do it before you list it as well. In fact, this is a great way to bring stuff in and then immediately get it out of the way so you don't just have piles of things waiting to be listed. So with AMF, with this particular thing, I can tell you right now that that's going to go in the closet. So you can see I've got the cactus bin, the pineapple bin. The Boris bin is a flamingo. It's a long story, but my cousins are Borises and they're flamingos. It's funny. Anyways. You have to be there. I have a mermaid bin. And then my Lisa Frank bins are puppy ice cream, polar bear, swan, leopard, unicorn, Dalmatian hamburger, and deer. If you don't know who Lisa Frank is, go check out Lisa Frank because you really want to be on the lookout for new Lisa Frank items, which they're like, they never appear. It's so sad. I've been a Lisa, Lisa Frank fan since I was a kid. So uh, deer, tiger, those are all of the bins with the big stickers on it. And I put a lot of stuff in there. So what happens is once I have it, if I want to put it away, if I want to get it off my desk, whether it's been listed or not, I need to log exactly where I'm putting it. So I've also got the red basket, which was the jewelry bin. So almost all jewelry goes into the red basket. Once it's been listed and is ready to be sold, it goes into that red basket. Um, the office bookshelf, I have a bookshelf right there. Bedroom display, because I do like to display some of the things that I am selling. So those are on display in the bedroom. Textile cubby, which I showed you guys. Office display, so sometimes I have things sitting out on my desk that I am selling. Bedroom storage. Uh, I do have a big hutch in the bedroom that I do use to keep the more valuable um, porcelain, really delicate glass stuff, because I don't want to set it in a bin. So it's sitting very carefully in a shelf. So that's bedroom storage. <laughs> living room display, because sometimes I want to display things in the living room. We have a few um, vintage pots out on the back deck. We have a few kitchen items like Odagiri mugs that we do like to use for coffee and things like that. So those are in the kitchen. Uh, the green ad bin, we have, uh, I have a bin that's sitting on my bookshelf over there that is full of old comic book ads and things like that. Millennium Falcon is a, is a Millennium Falcon bag. It's a bag that has all of the jewelry that we haven't listed yet. So, um, that's in one of those boxes over there. We have a wicker basket in the bedroom that's got a bunch of tchotchkes in it. Um... I have office bookshelf on there twice, and I do know this. I don't know why. Got to figure that out. But if I take one away, then a whole bunch of them will be empty, so I have to figure that out. Anyways, <coughs> um, we have a garage where we keep some stuff, not a lot of stuff. Um, primarily holiday, like Christmas items, because we have Christmas boxes. It's just easier to store it down there. And then uh, the garden deck. I don't know what that one is. Anyways, you guys can do your own versions of this. So that's essentially what happens when I list everything. So let's just do that real quick. We've already got this one done. Uh, so this one, and I'm going to be doing a uh, haul video here in a little bit with a lot of this. So brass, bow tie, picture frame, small. And then so we go one, three, seven, one. And this one was a $6 one. Ooh. And sometimes if you are doing something and you think you might uh, not have, like for this one, for instance, you might not have a way to describe it that is out of the ordinary. Here's what I love to do. So for instance, this particular picture frame is absolutely stunning, but I have very similar picture frames to this. So there's really no way that I can describe something, describe this one, so that when I'm looking at this later, I'm gonna be like, ah, that's the one. So what I do is I just grab my phone, phone, and I just take a picture of it. This is not 
the picture that's going to go onto face or onto your sales platform. This is just a really quick, simple photograph to jog your memory and say, Oh, that's exactly what it is. So essentially what happens is I'm going to go on ahead and text myself that picture. And because I have a Mac computer with my Mac phone, um, I can go on ahead and send this straight to my desktop. So that is doing that. So let's go on ahead and do enamel white, small, picture frame and this one I paid $2.99 for and then what I'm gonna do is over here in the picture section hold on one second let's go on ahead and it's sending <laughs> my desktop is a bit of a mess we can clean that up while we wait Okay, so we got this picture right here, and I'm just going to drag it over into this scene over here, and we are going to do that. Um, once you've logged all of this information, it's up to you whether or not you want to take the stickers off. I generally do, simply because uh, I don't want to send out something that has a Goodwill sticker on it. I clean it before I send it, but I've had those panic attacks before where I'm like, ah, did I do that? Did I just send them something? Did I just ask them to pay $50 for something that I just paid $2 for and sent them a sticker? <laughs> so uh, anyways, that's up to you whether you, I'll do that after this video. But um, that is definitely one of the things that I like to do as I log things. I'll just peel the stickers off really quick. So we've got another one like this one. So we would do the exact same thing because honestly the picture frames, and I'm gonna go over all of this stuff in the next video, in the haul video. I'll show you why I get these picture frames and how much they sell for um, because they really do sell for a lot and that's kind of a learning thing. But all right, uh, so mother of pearl metal picture frame. And I don't have a lot here because we've already logged most of it. So I've only got like three more things here. Uh, let's see. Oh, and this one didn't have a price, but it was $3. He, they charged me $2.99 for that one, the same as the previous one. Um, all right. And this one, whoop. this one I don't think is old, but it sure is cool. All right. Five-fold gray and gold frame one three seven four and this one was two dollars and let's see this one was really cool I like that one a lot all right so let's grab this image over here come back over here to this screen. This Mac honestly makes this insanely easy, but um, but I totally get if you don't have a Mac, you may need to do a little few little workarounds, like I don't know if you can do an AirDrop or Google Drive or something along those lines. Um, okay, or if, I don't know, maybe they've got the same system. I have no clue. Okay, um, let's keep on trucking. Oh my goodness. So I did go a little bit Halloween-y today. And again, we'll do all of these in the haul video. Go away, paper. Yay, ghosts! Okay. Uh, all right. Ceramic ghost. And this is a terrible way to describe him. We'll say hands up. Hands up. All right. Uh, one, three, seven, five. And how much to pay for you, ghosty ghost? Four dollars. $4 and the only reason I grabbed him is because Halloween is coming up and so um, I like to list and they had a lot of vintage stuff at my Halloween. Okay and then finally we had a and this is the most I've ever paid for anything I think ever. Uh, London Fog new jacket and here's a little bit of a learning thing. So some of the things very few but some of the things that I buy are not vintage. So what I like to do is type that in and we go 39 99 but the a new London fog jacket resells for like 150 to 200 dollars so um, I honestly think that that was a good buy there's no rips or holes it's practically brand new it still has the scarf with it it looks gorgeous so 
<sighs> that's the most I've ever spent, but whatever. Um, that's going to be like a hundred and fifty dollars sale, so I should be able to triple my price to triple my sale. But over here, what I do like to say is not vintage, and I do this under the Etsy column because Etsy does have a very strict: if it's not vintage, don't sell it here. If you didn't make it by hand, or if it's not vintage, um, don't sell it here. So that is. That is pretty much what I do. And then, uh, yeah, and then that's pretty much all I really need to do is just come in, make sure I have the prices listed, make sure I have, you know, the links. Then what I can, you know, the links and stuff done. Then what I can do is I can go sit in the living room, watch TV, research these, plug things in the notes. I have a picture day where I will take pictures of everything. Uh, and yeah, that's essentially what I do. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys how I log everything. So now what I can do is I can put this ghost in one of those bins or in storage in the bedroom. I can put the jacket and all the clothing. I can put that in the closet. I can put these in the picture frame bin that I have in the closet. This can go in the closet. Um, as long as I'm coming in here and saying, you know, that, let's see, location. So let's look at this tennis racket. That's going to go office closet, office closet. I believe that's a yellow one. Office shelf, office closet. It's green. I was close. Um, but then I'll put, I think it's cactus that I'd put for all of the cactus. So it's going to be the cactus bin, cactus bin, cactus bin. Those are all, that's where I put all of my picture frames is in the cactus bin. So now I can put all of these things away. And as I put them away, I log where I put them that way. When I'm ready to list, I just come back and I can find them immediately. And the other great thing is when something sells, I can go find it immediately. It's that easy. So guys, that is it. I'm going to go do a quick haul video with all of these goodies, plus a lot more that I found over the last couple of days. So um, yeah, join me in that next video. Bye.